welcome to This Week in Android. I'm your host, Ashley Eskeva. I'm here with my fabulous co-host, Mark Jeffrey. I'm so fabulous this week. So fabulous. I don't know if I want to be called so fabulous. So awesome. Uh, less, but that's okay. Less, uh, well, no, I would say not, it's not a, it's not a Wii shirt. You don't it's have the what? Beatles, the Me Beatles. Oh, that's this right. Week. No, it's uh, actually this is Command N. This is a, another show, like another tech show that, like ours. Sweet. All uh, right. A rather large one that's run for a very long time. Oh, so, very yeah, cool. Command very N. cool. And uh, to my left, I have, oh my gosh, John Scheipel. Did I pronounce your last right. name right? You got it. You got it. I think I'm, I might. I will call you Squishy. That works. <laughs> His nickname is Squishy. It's just more so memorable. Like like random thing. Um, it would be funnier if it was random, but no, I'll, uh, I'll call you Squi Squishy or John. And um, with us, joining us on Skype today, uh, as as was last week, we have Dave Buchanan and Lane Montgomery from the Android App Show. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, guys. Doing? Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Oh, gosh. I can barely hear them. Can we, uh, uh -oh. yeah, we can barely hear them in here, by the way, you guys. I don't want to turn them up. Mm. Um, also, do we, can we see them? We're not really seeing them. Anyway, technical difficulties, folks. Sorry yes, about yes. that. So yeah. we're sorry we're getting late. Okay. We're we're sorry we're getting we're uh, late getting started again. So I think we're gonna move the show to four. I think yeah. we're just gonna like that seems you know like a good idea. We'll just call it four o'clock. So from now on, this weekend Android will go up at four o'clock. So that sounds like at good least point. that way we've been like ten minutes late or something like. Now that, that now that Peter Jackson is directing, right? Twist. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to just push it out a little bit. Yeah, we we'll just push it out. This is fine. It's all okay. good. Okay. So what happened this week? Well. Mobile World Conference, Barcelona, That's huge. Right. Everybody's That's like in Barcelona this week. We every, to, except for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get to go. Jason wouldn't let us go. We're yeah. virtually there, though. It, for, I know. I mean, we're there in spirit. Yeah. We're there in spirit. And on the internet. We're there on the internet. So lots of stuff. Um, the, the one thing I was talking to you about earlier is uh, Google saying they're shipping 60,000 handsets a day. That's I mean, amazing. Well, it's actually, yeah. to, to clarify, it's not Google themselves. It's Just all, all Android, all Android apps handsets. So, yeah, across so all There are 60,000 Android-based handsets from all carriers. Sorry, all handset manufacturers yeah. that are shipping now per month, which is, which is pretty amazing. Insane. I mean, I, like, I'm impressed. I, but I, I do think that, um, I do think that, I mean, in the sense of Apple, if the iPhone is not for you, there's no other phone. Right. If, the, if, for example, the Hero is not for you, there's still the Droid, there's still now the Devourer, and I mean... Yeah, you want the Devourer, don't you? That was the big... Yeah, mine want. is the Legend. I'm, oh, is that oh, the one you want? God, that unibody okay, design. Are those all HTC? Those are all HTC design, Yeah. Right? HTC, the same people who made the Nexus One, I think, too. Yes, and, so. uh, and, and people are... Uh, People are, people are excited about it. I mean, well, the HTC Legend, it's got that nice unibody design, the aluminum, and it's got now, instead of the uh, the actual, uh, I forget, the, the ball or the- The trackball thing. It's, it's now got just that optical controller, which is right. sweet. And now they're putting in sense in there, and I mean, it's it's a big deal, and lots of stuff happening over at Mobile World, and the, now we're talking about, you know, Adobe Air. Yeah, the I mean, Adobe thing, I'm, I'm excited about that. There's a bunch of stuff in the news. Yeah, a lot the, of The news, news segment's going to be long this week because there's yeah. just a lot of stuff to go over. But yeah. um, So let's uh, let's go to a remote host real quick. Can we yep. uh, see them real quick, Dave and Lane? Let's see our, our lovely... Do you have us yet now? Hey, hey there, there you, you are. Go. All right. <laughs> How are you guys doing this week? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. And there's a lot of exciting stuff coming out of Barcelona like you were talking about. Yeah. What, what, what caught your eye? Uh, well, Google had quite a few announcements. I uh, One of the things that came up at the last moment on the software side was the uh, translate feature in Google Goggles. I don't know if you've seen this. I've seen Google Goggles. I've not seen the translate feature. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Well, they, uh, they demonstrated it uh, translating German to English. So you could just pick up Google Goggles, you know, take the picture like you normally would, oh, wow. and it just changes the text right over to English for you. That's crazy. So a picture of anything, like a sign or... Walking yeah. around in, yeah. in you know Prague, you gotta have something translated. You just snap. Yeah, for right now, it only supports uh, it only supports English uh, coming from German. It doesn't go both ways right now. Right. Um, but I think you know they have to eventually be supporting the rest of the stuff. Oh did, yeah. Did they say anything about tying it into Google Maps or anything like that, like augmented reality, like if you're a tourist or a traveler? That would be very interesting. Yeah. No, but I mean. One of the, one of my big uh, one of my predictions for it is going to be that they include like a sort of overlay on the camera, so that eventually all you'll have to do is point it at something, and then it'll just overlay the translation right over it in your view. Oh, wow. It'd be very interesting to see how uh, how or if Layar uses that technology. <laughs> I just well, got to, I got Layar the tour later. of Layar <laughs> today, and I'm very excited about it. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, anything uh, anything else that you guys are you know really thrilled about in terms of Barcelona this week? Well, the uh, the Dalvik Turbo Virtual Machine and the uh, 
a virtual machine upgrade that Google has announced that they're working on themselves uh, to process code uh, just in time to get a quite a big performance boost. Uh, the the people and the name escapes me that coded the Dalvik machine are saying that they're getting a two to three times performance boost, and that's just from you know upgrading the code. That isn't a new phone. You get a G1, it's going to all of a sudden run two to three times faster. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Like that. <clears throat> well, we've heard we've heard of people who've done some mods to Android getting those kind of speed increases uh, by doing just-in-time compiling as well. So yes. I, yeah. Some I of the custom the same ROMs thing. have it. What's that? Some of the custom ROMs have it. Yes. Um, but they're talking about you know making it mainstream. Yeah. Why? Well, I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, it seems to me you know seems who, like a no-brainer. Who would not yeah. want more speed? So. Yeah. No, I don't yeah. think I. No, I like my phone slower. I think I'll just keep it that way. That doesn't make any sense. But uh, well. Uh, what do you guys think of uh, the two new phones, the glorious, sexy new HTC devices that we saw this week? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I, right? Wow, I know. You guys like them? Did you see my tweets this like a couple days ago? I was like having a yeah. heart attack. <laughs> man, that the, the thing is, my bank account's crying right now. Yeah. Because uh, like you were talking about the trackball being replaced with that optical mouse with the <sighs> that solid button that kind of clicks down. I mean, that just That's looks like great. it's much more appealing. Yeah. And sturdier, um, and then also I love that they they reintroduced that sort of lip on the end. Yeah, we haven't uh, seen that the, in a while. Uh, the chin. Yeah, yeah, like that little slope on the chin. It brings uh, the mic out a little bit. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It also it protects the screen too. If you put it face down, you don't have uh -huh. it rubbing against something. Oh, hmm. that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Hmm. hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome, but yeah, no, I, my, man, my bank account's crying too, and I, and I am, I'm terrified that I'm gonna have to switch my, uh, my provider, which is currently, not a 3G provider, so I may have to, uh, may have to switch, and that's also going to be extremely expensive. They're starting to run into, I mean, they're starting to have run into a problem now, where they're actually coming out with stuff too fast. Too fast, and people are getting mad. People are getting irritated. People are getting really mad. They buy one thing, and then there's, you know, three seconds later, there's something much better. Yeah, and yeah. And it's just coming so fast and furious that people are now going. Hmm, maybe I'll wait. Maybe one. I'll wait, and then they're, but then you know the next phone comes out, and they're like, well, maybe I'll wait for the next one, and then you know you kind of get into this, into this thing where you're waiting for the next best thing, but then you're missing out on all the good stuff that's coming along the way. But I do like this performance boost, just you know, by getting the new OS. Is that how it's going to work uh, with the next release? Right. Yeah. That's that's actually really cool. Kind of like a new phone. Yeah. You know, well, I know it's. it's uh, it performs better. I think the Legends running on what is it a. Um, it's running on Eclair, and it's a Snapdragon 2.1 processor. Mm. So it's it's going to be really nice. I'm a little bit obsessed with it right now. You like are. I'm a little bit obsessed yeah. with the legend <laughs> right now. I, I I'm I like have a little like it's my desktop at home. It's, it's my wallpaper. Well, this uh this company I looked it up. Myriad is the name of the of the guys making that have made the Dalvik engine for uh for the platform right now, and basically they're saying they're going to team with carriers so that their feature phones have uh, this new faster engine built into it and Google's version is going to kind of be for everybody uh, but right now Myriad has it working and they're going to try and partner with people to offer a better Android you know to differentiate we talk about fragmentation of the platform uh, they're trying to push it in I guess a positive way because they say they're 100% compatible with the existing Dalvik engine because they made it Oh. Mm -hmm. So, we might not. I like. I might not see it on my G1, um, but you know, who knows for what's coming down the pipe? We'll probably see it. Interesting. Well, especially if you're into games. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be that's gonna be <laughs> the really big. Okay. Um, we should probably do our next segment now because I know we yeah. got, we have we Kevin Skype Marks coming in. up. Yeah. So, so. right now we're gonna do app of the week. So that's okay. We'll do that segment first. We're gonna say goodbye to you guys. Yes. All right. We'll bring you back Roger. for the news. We'll bring you back. We'll be for back. The news. It's time for App of the Week. That's Let's right. talk about Quick. Okay, so I, in the chat room, I basically asked everyone to go, yeah, the App of the Week is Quick, in case you didn't guess that already. Um, I did put up where my, uh, where my uh, Quick uh, URL is. Actually, I said Ustream, but I meant Quick. Um, it's basically quik.com slash Mark Jeffrey. So just my name, M-A-R-K-J-E-F-F-R-E-Y. And what I've got here, basically, and I'll, I'll put this towards this camera, I basically got the Quick application running on my... Android phone, and I'm going to turn it on, and it's it's very simple, but it's very powerful. 
to be able to broadcast video, live mm -hmm. video, oh, yeah. directly to a web page yeah. from my mobile handset. It's pretty amazing. A quick correction, it's QIK, not QIK, know you, sorry, know you. Apologies. So QIK.com slash Mark Jeffrey. Yes, yeah, so now here, so if you're watching the video, it should be broadcasting live right now. So I'm basically sending this video out. There's John. Now, here's a view of the studio that a lot of people never see. This is what we see. That's why we're always looking up there. That's right. So mm -hmm. basically, if you're looking up there, I'm showing you what, you know, there's where our monitor is. There's where all the cameras are. I know it sort of ruins the magic of the, of the place to see what know, going on like Everyone's the like, oh. That's but now, now you see, like, basically what it looks like behind, behind the stage. And this is what we see from, you know, we get basically have our computers when we're looking at the chat there. And we have our notes right there. So that's what the world looks like from our point of view. And uh, did you guys, did you guys all see it? People in the chat room? Do you guys, uh, do you guys? Fair viewers. <laughs> uh, I guess not. I guess we're not getting. I video. see. Uh, I see your videos. Did that's you see recorded. I saw that. I saw it say Mark Jeffries live streaming, and I saw some of it. But then I it think. Should uh, there. Probably is, it should be. Oh, actually, it should be up there right now. Let me try it one more time. Does it do the audio as well, or just? Yes, uh, it should do all the audio and everything. Okay, so I believe I'm broadcasting now again. So if you go there, okay. No, I'm actually looking at the site right now, and I think it's. Yeah, there we go. It seems to be there. I actually should probably tilt it like that. Okay, so I'm now broadcasting. So if you go to the, the site again, I'm showing you exactly what I just showed there you a few minutes ago. You see it? Okay, so I think it didn't work the first time. So that's that actually right so quite there's, there's Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Versus like iPhone uh, video. You know, I don't think live you can stream, do this. Stream, you yeah, can. and there's some big lights up there. So but if you're it's a lot video, slower. It's I a lot say. slower and a little bit choppier, right? And sometimes the audio doesn't even go through. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. They're showing it very good. They Which actually is picked fantastic. up on it. Yeah. They're showing it. So there's a little tour of, uh, of what the, what the studio cool. looks like. Cursing. So there's the yeah. There's the Tyler <laughs> chair. So if you watch the other ones. Oh, it's like. And there's there's where the old Tyler chair used to be. So. <laughs> so this is really. I mean, this this app is just really powerful. Yeah. And, and I mean, for people news wise, newsworthy wise, I mean, you've got people mm -hmm. like for example the Haiti earthquake. You could have people live streaming from the ground immediately yeah. following some major news event. So this is something that um, I think a lot of people should be, I, th I think over time, a lot of people are going to start taking advantage of this in terms of um, even, and, and for something as simple as social networking, people are going to take advantage of saying, this is what I'm doing oh, yeah. right now. Like, look at what I'm doing or where I am or whatever. And I th again, I think it's more of like, as we go on over time with, um, especially with Android, like the capability of Android, it's pushing the limits of the things that we can share immediately, yeah. instantly, yeah. all instant gratification, which is great. Yeah, I, I, just, I seriously, I've, I have not seen it on the iPhone, but I don't believe it's possible to do it. It um, is. Uh, yeah, but it's, it wasn't nearly as good. It's as not as The quality's not, no, not there. I mean, yeah. quality-wise, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can do it, but it's very choppy. Yeah. It looks very much like, you know, like the Soyuz. Yeah, especially if you're doing a 3G, which doesn't have the built-in right. video. You can still do it. It just is it's ugly. It's the like, edge why, network. Why bother? Has, uh, yeah. you know, why, why, why write the app in the first place? Yeah, right. I don't, yeah. I don't know why you would. I can't imagine AT&T being able to deal with it either. Oh, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> there is that. So. Even, um, if the, even if the iPhone handled it well, it would be extremely difficult on AT&T. So I don't know whether we have uh, Kevin ready to go yet or not. Yeah. Do we have him we up do? there? We do have him? Oh, great. Gosh, that's cool. All Hi right. Dad. Well, uh, hey, there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies Kevin and gen Marks. Kevin Marks, our guest of the week. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Can you actually see us, or are you just, I think you can I just can hear us. I can just about see you on the stream, so you're lagged a bit. I can oh. now see myself, which is even weirder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it is sort of a strange thing, isn't it? So, so Kevin, right now, you're the VP at British, uh, British Telecom, correct? That's right. I'm VP Web Service at British Telecom, um, working at Ribbit in Mountain View. Ah, very nice. And you were previously at Google for two years. That's where we, you and I actually first met, I believe. Yes, that's right. And you were you were basically the open, sorry, open. open I was at Google. I worked on mostly on open social, right, um, and on the open web standards around social networking stuff. Yeah. Okay, so how do you, so what are you doing now at British Telecom? Describe what your what, what your position is there. Um, well, the the main thing I'm doing um, is continuing to work on open web standards um, and helping um, BT you know connect BT to. Um, the web community over here in San Francisco. Um, in addition, I'm working with the group at Ribbit here who are, are building um, uh, a web infrastructure for telephony so that um, anyone can build telephony apps over the web um, and, and looking at how we can integrate that with, with various different platforms and um, things as well. So we already have a product, Ribbit Mobile, um, which effectively um, gives you back control over your telephone. You, you route your, your, your cell phone um, to Ribbit Mobile um, once it rings, um, and then it can answer the phone for you. It can route it to other devices. Um, you can call out from it, send, receive SMSs, and so on. And if someone leaves you a voicemail, it'll transcribe it and text it back to you. Um, and one of the things that that 
do- means that we can um, route it to a, any any different kind of phone and do sort of interesting things with it. So a lot of it, a lot of what we're thinking about is how can we make um, telephony web-like? How can we um, make telephony something that is a natural part of the web rather than this separate thing that we do in separate devices? Got it. Okay. And now, what are you guys doing with Android? I know you guys are, are doing some stuff, right? Yes. Um, what we've got at the moment, Ribbit Mobile, the, the primary app we've got for Ribbit Mobile is, is Flash-based. Um, it runs in the browser. But we also have the both a mobile version at m.ribbit.com that works on, nicely on Android and, and at iPhone and others. Um, and also we work with um, routing to SIP clients, which means that you can use a SIP client on your phone, on, on Android. Oh, wow. Um, um, to 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 make phone calls, or whatever, which means that you can you can turn you know a a, a device like the Arcos into a phone. Um, oh. uh, but it also means that you can use if you have if you have a Droid like I do. The problem with a Droid is it it works in the US, doesn't work anywhere else because it's only um, it, it's a, it's only got uh, CDMA. Right. right. So. But it also has Wi-Fi, which means that if you if you install the SIP client and set it up right, um, if I go to England, I don't have any cell phone connectivity. I do have Wi-Fi. Then my phone can ring and I can make calls just as I did before, um, routing the same number. And if if I don't have Wi-Fi, it'll it'll take a message and send it to me when I do have it. Oh, so wow. a lot of it is is bridging the you know, the the point of, of making telephony virtual is to um, mean that you're not bound by the, the physical constraints you are with existing telephony. Yeah. Very cool. Not bound by carrier constraints. That's nice. <laughs> Always like that. But, but yeah. it also helps. The, it helps the carriers too. You know, the, if I'm, you know, I'm paying Verizon for this thing, but I, I can't roam when I'm in London. They're, they're, they're not getting any benefit from that. So actually, it, it's a, it's a minus against the phone. But if it, I can suddenly use it on Wi-Fi when I'm in London, then this this phone be, becomes, you know, it's, it's a plus again. And the, the fact that it's got the sort of big beautiful screen, and everything I like about it, um, is then you know the, the drawback of not working abroad is mitigated by the fact that actually it starts working again, and also I'm not playing ridiculous roaming charges for it. Right. I love when Kevin speaks. He's got that, yeah. the the accent. Everything he says is like twenty percent smarter just because exactly. that, that, yeah. that accent. Yes. <laughs> oh, am I talking too quickly there? Just... <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Because uh, of that. I, I have to say, I, t- I was telling um, Kevin, I was telling. Mark earlier that uh, I was I was very impressed that you'd worked at Google because I've read about those crazy interview questions they ask you like how many golf balls fit in a school bus, <laughs> and uh, and so I I uh, I was I was like wow he made it through that like a smart guy like uh, I, before I even met you I knew you were a genius. <laughs> well, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quite sure how to respond to that one. Uh, well, no, okay. it's I, I yeah I, I've you know I've got I've. I've I've got an engineering background. I went to Google, and then I realized when I got to Google that there were thousands of people there who could write code, and very few that could actually communicate with the public about it. So I ended up switching roles into being the um, developer advocate for Open Social, precisely because they needed people to be able to talk to both of the general public and to developers about this stuff, but still be able to translate it back to um, engineering. So I ended up sort of switching from being a very technical role to being a more public-facing role there. Yes. Um, yeah. That's no. I'm, and I'm glad you are because I like, like I said, I'm not necessarily really in like on the technical side. Like it's yeah, sometimes like when I hear tech specs and everything, it's a little bit harder for me. And I'm just like, okay, I think I follow this. Yeah. Um, even though I mean, I understand computers really well, and I like I'm very technological in terms of like building my own PC and and everything. And I love reading the news about phones and everything that's going on. But sometimes when I hear somebody with a very technical background speaking to me, it's it's hard to follow sometimes. But um, I find this very easy to follow. So you're doing a great job. So Kevin, have you been watching the news coming out of Barcelona? Um, not not in great detail. No, I've seen bits of it. Um, which particular bits we, we, were you finding interesting? Well, I, I was actually going to ask you that same question because you've been following it. So, um, no, I mean, I think there's there's a number of things that are, that are kind of interesting. There's obviously all the handset news that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the statistic that we were talking about this earlier in the show that uh, there's now sixty thousand handset Android-based handsets being pushed out there. I think daily. daily. Right. Yeah. So, yes. No, that, well, that, I thought that was very interesting. I mean, the other thing that struck me was that increasingly, when you go to buy a phone, the choice is between different an- Android devices. I had this recently. My my wife um, phone, my wife's phone was stolen from her car. We went to go and get another one, and went to the um, T-Mobile shop. And there's like, round the edges, there are these other things, but in the middle, there are six or seven different kinds of Android to choose from. And I think that's really interesting. Do you think that um, Do you think that Android as a platform is almost fragmenting itself too much by releasing too many handsets, or do you think that that actually benefits them in that they can sort of make more niche devices that appeal to a smaller 
a smaller section of the people, but appeal very very highly. Like it's a it's they have a greater appeal in terms of what exactly people are looking for. Um, I think I think it's a benefit. Um, I think the the value of having interoperable software is very high. Um, and the, you know the, we have a bunch of different Android like dev Android devices around now with different screen resolutions and different kinds of keyboards and, st and different buttons on them, but they all run the same software. Um, and that's really important because it means that you're not coupled, you know, those two are now decoupled. So you're not saying, oh, I had this really nice app that did this thing that I liked, um, but I, I, that means I've got to buy another phone of that make. You can right. say, oh, I've this other thing. And the thing b before, in effect, the phones were specialized. If you think about it, the, the sidekick was specialized for texting and for um, doing chat. Mm -hmm. the, the BlackBerry was specialized for doing email, and everything else was an afterthought. And the, the, the iPhone was a web browser. Certainly the first iteration of the iPhone, it, it was a web browser. There were no apps. There, you know, it was a web browser and a phone. Um, and those were the sort of, depending on what kind of thing you wanted, that, that's what you bought. Um, I had a sidekick because I spent more time chatting, and the, the, the iPhone did not appeal to me because there was no keyboard on it. Right. Um, Ironically, now I've got the Droid, and it's got a keyboard that I don't use because it's not very good. But that, that's <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, we've talked about that in the show before too. Uh -huh. I, I hate the yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Mark's not a fan of the keyboard no. either. You're not alone. But my, but my wife, um, my wife, um, got a Motorola Click, which um, I, don't know if, I don't know if you've played with that one, but um, it has a slide-out keyboard that's actually got some travel to it and feels quite good. So it, it's almost as nice as the Sidekick keyboard. Um, and you know, and it, it hasn't got the pixel resolution of the Droid, but it but it works it works really nicely for her and for her usage pattern, which is a mixture of email and phone calls and, and a bit of web browsing. Um, so the the interesting thing is that Android has sort of put an underpinning there that means that we can run all these different kinds of applications on it, and so different manufacturers can tweak the phones to, to appeal to different people. So you know, there's there's that weird Fender phone that I, I don't I don't understand that, but friends of mine who like guitars say, no, that's really cool. I've got to have that phone. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, there's, you know, there are you know, ones with lots of pixels, but that aren't actually phones. Like the Arcos is a sort of harbinger for that. Um, that's, that's saying um, you can do more with this. And this, this, you know, you can imagine extrapolating a bit further along this line and getting something that is not quite, you know, somewhere in between the, 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 the iP iPad form factor, which seems huge to me. Um, but is, is something more like the size of a paperback book, but it has as many pixels as an iPad is going to have, and will run the Android stuff and will still be a good browser. So I expect we're going to see more of these devices, but the fact there's, there's an operating system there that means we can write um, an app for it and with a, you know, a little bit of tweaking and debugging, run it on, on several of them, that becomes very powerful. The other half of that is that, of course, we can build web apps um, that run on these phones um, and have reasonable assurance that they'll run on, um, again, Various Androids on the yeah. iPhone, um, on the um, on the Palm, because they're all basically got the same browser inside. They're all running on WebKit, which mm -hmm. um, and they're all thinking about the HTML5 features and augmenting those. Right. So you can target that as the core, and then do a little bit of specialization for the around the edges for the for those phones, rather than sitting there saying, okay, I've got to write, I've got three different Java SDKs for the three different phones. I've got to, and I've got the Objective C SDK for the iPhone. I've got to write ver radically different applications. Right. So that that underpinning um, is is sort of a double renaissance. One is that suddenly we've actually got web browsers that work, and all credit to the iPhone for putting the stake in the ground and making that a must-have feature for everyone else, um, and also for open sourcing WebKit so that everyone can actually be running pretty much the same code base. That that's a that's a massive thing. Um, but the second piece is being able to. Um, that the Android gives you is you're able to replace bits of the operating system if you need to. So on here, the the um, the dialer gets taken over on, on my Droid, um, so that if I've if if I'm somewhere where the where there isn't 3G but there is Wi-Fi, then the SIP agent just comes up and takes that piece over, um, and it doesn't you know it doesn't look any different to me, but it's actually making a call over over Wi-Fi using SIP rather than making a call over 3G using the the, the carrier. And that's um, because you've moderate, modified the operating system, is that correct? That's, well, you can, it's not the operating system, you can patch out individual pieces of it. You can patch out the application. Right. And so so the, 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 the SIP client taps into the dialer that's built in there. Uh, but also you can download, a, you, if you don't like the dialer that's coming, you can, you can download a different one or, or, to, or modify that as well. So there's, there's the ability to do deeper customization there than is, than, is, than is really possible with most of the other um, 
phone system. The so iPhone. That, mm-hmm. right, the yeah. iPhone. You can well, say. not just the yeah, yeah, or the BlackBerry, or you know, it's, sure. it's quite hard to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd say the only thing that's even like remotely close to the openness of of Android and the custom ability would be probably WebOS for yeah. Palm. That, that's hmm. I, that's yes. the only thing I can think of that's right. even close. But I mean, but back to this kind of balkanization question. We were talking about Dalvik Turbo uh, a bit earlier. You know, how do you? I mean, this is for a question for Kevin. How do you see? Uh, you know that type of software being integrated. You know, is a game going to like license that and then include it as part of their executable? Is it going to be embedded in the phone? Or it's uh, like, an, you know, it's like an engine. It, it would be more for higher performing apps. So mm-hmm. you know, if you had a lesser phone, it wouldn't be as as good. So I'm just curious. You know, it seems like that's a great example of how something that could um, promote balkanization, but but might not. You know, I'm just mm-hmm. curious what your perspective is. Well, it comes it comes down to how you how your development model is 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 set up. Um, if you have only got one thing to target, then that's what you target. If you know there's more than one thing there, then you then you write code that, that deals with that. So you know that was the you know, the issue Apple's got with going from the iPhone to the iPad is they just made the screen several times bigger, <laughs> but everything had targeted it for that that smaller screen size. Whereas with Android, um, yes, we started out with a particular screen size, and then ones came out with larger screen sizes. But the, there was some, you know. Uh, modeling in the operating system that, that made that work reasonably well for the apps. Um, and we now know that they can scale, therefore we can design them that way and, and say, okay, this feature may or may not be there. So it, it's, it's like, if you're used to doing web development, you're used to doing this anyway. You're used to doing what we, which you could either call graceful de- degradation or progressive augmentation, depending on which way around you look at it. But you say, <laughs> um, I've built this website, um, I've got the basic thing working, now I'll make it better by adding features here. Or you can say, I built this website using all these um, features, and then if they're not there, then bits of them will fall off. But either way, you're used to the idea of there being right. multiple user agents out there and, and, and something available. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, but the fact that there's, there's the ability to check for capabilities and say, can I do this? Can I discover if the user's, you know, what user's location? Um, can I actually get access to the microphone? Um, which, you know, may or may not be possible. It, 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 if you know that there's that this stuff may or may not be there, you can test for it and deal with it. But if if all you're ever given is one device that has a has a fixed feature set, it's it's harder for you to say, for you to know that it will work in future. So I think there's value in having some diversity there, um, even early on, because it means that as you develop it, you expect the diversity to, um, range to increase to some extent. You know. Okay. So here, this is something that we've talked about before, or I've talked about. This is like my little soapbox thing that I get on, and. Basically, when I when I've used Android-based apps or you know, based, use my Android phone, um, and I use the iPhone, the difference is very striking. The Android phone feels uh, more techy. It feels like when, it, for example, when an app is installed, a lot of warnings come up saying things like, you know, oh, I need to access the camera, or I need to access this or that, right. like Java used to when it first came out, and it looks like it looks like something is going wrong to the consumer, not to us, right. not to our eyes, but to the consumer. And so one of the things I worry about with Android is obviously more powerful. It's obviously better that it's open, but it's not as well produced. It's not as slick. It's not as easy to understand for the consumer. It's not as it's not as f- like soldier on the ground, consumer friendly, like right out of yes. the box. It, you've you've got to have a little bit of technology bit know-how to really ways. understand it. Yeah, it feels like. So I guess my question for yeah. Kevin is, um, you know, how do you think? First of all, do you agree with me? And second of all, if you do, what do you think needs to happen in order to fix this? Um, I think, yeah, there is a little bit more to learn to some extent. Um, I think most of the, a lot of the complaints there are from people who, who, who have been taught how to use the iPhone by using an iPhone and then try and use the Android and go, oh, this doesn't work the same way. You, know, you, can, you can find out that you need to drag down the top bar to find notifications, but if you don't know to do that, then yeah, you're, you're going to be confused by it. Because mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the iPhone, the notifications just pop up in your face and you only ever get one. And it, that's actually much more annoying and much less useful. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's, it's a much worse affordance. Um, but people, you know, if you've been trained to think that's the only way it will work, then, then that's, how, you know, that's how you expect to do it. Um, I've seen similar things with the, the dialer, um, where people uh, get grumpy because the dialer shows recent calls rather than showing numbers for you to type on, um, which is them you know, harking back to the idea that, you know, that typing numbers is how you make phone calls rather than going recent calls. And it, it depends a lot on the feel that you have about it. And, and you know, there, there's always a little bit of how do I use this device and mm-hmm. how straightforwardly can I get into, into this. Um, and I think the thing that we're seeing is that if you look at 
the amount of web traffic driven by Android and the amount of web traffic driven by iPhone, you're seeing you know the same or more web traffic per device figures from both. So it's fairly clear that people are working out that they can use this to browse the web, they can use this to do other things. So I'm not sure that there's, and maybe there's a little bit of segmentation between um, I just like to look at things and not type and I want to have a bit more control over the phone between the two. And it'd be interesting, it'd be interesting to have a look at that across different models. It would be fascinating to, to look at different Android models and see which ones have more apps installed, um, post more updates, that kind of thing. Right. Do, are the Droid users, um, typing more than the um, uh, what do you call it the the touch what was it called? I forget the Nexus? name of all the models yeah the, the, oh, the, 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 yeah, the, no the Nexus the little the little skinny one the, the, the one that's the mass market one that everyone the droid. has the droid? Is, is it called, not the, the droid the, the, the other one for the yeah. must be the hero There's, I'm, I'm forgetting the names of them all now <laughs> um, <laughs> but the you know the other thing is that it doesn't take that long to get your head around the notification system. It doesn't take long to work out how to um, go back to the main menu and, and click on things. Um, the, the click is fairly different. They, there they've skinned that quite a lot. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on when you buy a click because you've got the notification apps that sit on the, on the desktop and, and do stuff at you that, you, that are pre-installed that you have to go and get rid of if you don't want to do that to you. But, but so it's, it was, you know, you're getting slightly more of that. This phone has been doing weird stuff to me because the carrier wants it to mm -hmm. um, but um, you know and I think it could be you know, there's, there's there's scope for them to do more in terms of peer features of being able to say well what are my friend what apps are my friends using that kind of idea there's definitely scope for that um, the you know the, the the iPhone you have you, you, you sort of wave apps at each other and say have you seen this have you seen that there's a bit of that going with Android but not quite as much somehow that, that, that's my sense of that Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think it, I think you're uh, I think you're right in saying it would be very interesting to do almost like an Android census and find out what demographics of people kind of gravitate towards certain phones, what they're using them for, how they're using them. Like I I, th I think that information would actually be really 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 fascinating it to see. Be. I think that would be uh, very interesting. And uh, Google, you're welcome for that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too bad Kevin doesn't work there anymore. But I know yeah, that's it. I'm going to poke somebody. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> he knows all the right people though. Um, so, Kevin, a little, little side note. So, you are you, you're doing several podcasts of your own right now, um, and I believe you you have something called Tumbling that you're interested yes. in. Tell us about that. So, so Tumbling. The idea of Tumbling um, is that when you've got a um, an online community, some of them work and some of them don't. Um, and there was this sort of frustrating thing of trying to work out why. And looking into it, I found that the ones that worked had somebody who was making them work. Um, and we don't have a good word for that role. The person who actually makes the conversations happen, um, squashes the trolls, encourages the, the, the newbies, makes it all fit together and often vanishes into the background. Um, and I, I got the word Tumblr from Teresa Nielsen Hayden, who um, is a, a book publisher and also has her own um, blog with a, the most amazing um, commentary community making light and, and, and took on this job for Boing Boing um, when they reopened their comments section. And it's a Yiddish word and it was the, it was the word for um, the entertainers at the um, resorts um, in, the, in the Catskill Mountains that the, 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 the Jewish community would go to in the summer um, and they would all sit in the corners and not talk to each other so the Tumla had to be there to bring them together. Um, and that, we don't actually have a word for this in English but I think it's a really important role um, online, it's something that you have to um, you have to find someone to do this. And so, talking about the, the name, giving it a name, discussing the role is my way of encouraging people to think about this as they start doing social stuff online, as they start building online communities. So they've got a, we've got a show TumbleVision.tv that's on the Twit Network um, with um, myself, Heather Gold, and Deb Schultz, and, and a guest every week where we we talk about this idea and try and. Um, explore the dimensions of it. The, the, the key for me is that I think this is a really, really important role, and not having a name for it makes it really hard to, to talk about. Um, so that, that's that's where the Tumblr um, came from. Got it. Okay. And so we can see this at what time now? When, when you do your broadcast? Again? It's um, 7 p.m. Pacific on Thursdays on Twit.tv. Got it. Okay. Great. Lila Ports Network. Yeah. So, uh, right. Kevin, always a pleasure to listen to you, and uh, very much appreciate you coming on the show. So, thank yeah. you. Thank you very Great. much. Great to, great to see you all. Cheers. See you. Bye. Okay. Let's. Uh, I guess it's news time. I was going to uh, say, let's let's bring our, our 
fantastic yeah, we'll uh, Android app show co-host. Co yeah, it'll take them a minute to get the uh, to basically bring them back. Let's on. do the news. Jason's dogs are trying to get into the studio, so that's, we're momentarily distracted. Anyway. They're the coolest looking dogs. They are pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so yes, so I, what we're trying to get, well, we're basically getting our co-host back. So I'll basically just start reading the first story and whenever they show up, they show up. Um, so first story, and this is all stuff coming out of uh, Barcelona. Obviously there's a lot to talk about. Lots. Um, interesting story. Sony Ericsson turned the opportunity to build Google's Nexus One down. This is the yeah. rumor. So, yeah. That's something you don't say. What's that? <laughs> you don't say that publicly. You're not saying. Yeah. What, it's, why would you it's, ever I, I, admit that? God, like, oh know. yeah, we turned that down. Like that's. Why like, would they? All right. First of all, why would you do that? That just seems insane. Well, first, why would you turn it down? And then after its success, why would you admit that you turned it down? Like it just seems. That yeah. seems like such an odd thing for a corporation my, to do. My like, question was going to be, was this a mistake? And I think it's really um, obvious that it was. Yeah. Well, what do you, you know? So then the question is, what what the hell were they thinking? Maybe it was tied to the. Uh, you know the Nexus. There, there's the news that they might not be releasing the Nexus in China. I mean, I, maybe they're trying to get on that bandwagon. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking maybe Graphic. it's a, a mea culpa, and yeah. like, yeah, we messed up. Like, please give us another chance. Like, <laughs> really? You think they're, you think they're plugging from the chance? I, you know, I don't know. Like, when people apologize for stuff like that, it's like a Tiger Woods thing. Where it's like, I'm really sorry, and I feel so terrible. I messed up. I, I'm admitting my, you know, I'm admitting my mess up, and I'm admitting it's a terrible idea and all this stuff. But I'm gonna make amends for it. I, I, I don't know. What do you guys think, Dave I Lane? Think, I think it's partly uh, that there it was kind of a hit at HTC because HTC started off as a, a company that would just make phones for other carriers, and that was their whole business. And then Sony said, "Oh, we're too good for that. We, we, we make." Uh, our own stuff. We yeah, make they're the really, PlayStation Three. <laughs> they're really big on branding, I think, yeah. and this is kind of you know I conflicted you. with that. Well, that could be actually that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So you didn't want to be so basically just be a job shop. Yeah. So you guys and your logic. So they're proud of it now. <laughs> so it sounds like they're proud of it now. They're just, they're they don't think it's a mistake. Yeah, like it's a, they're just like. You guys think they think it's a mistake, or no? Well, the CEO doesn't think it's a mistake, um, but I I would likely bet that there's other people in the company that. Would disagree with him. I, I think you're right. <laughs> hmm. Okay. All right. Well, enough of that story. Yeah. Um, okay. So second story. AT and T goes Google. Will finally sell the first Android device. So basically, the story here is that AT and T is going to start selling uh, the Motorola Motorola Backflip and the Dell Mini Three exclusively later this year. So the Backflip will be the first Android device that is is sold by AT and T. So. <laughs> So at and is <laughs> cheating on Apple. Uh, What's well, going on here? Well, makes switching costs a lot lower, too. Yeah, you don't have to yeah exactly. Your, uh, plan. To that's break right. your at and card. Honestly, I think that they should have just named it the Motorola backhand because that's what it feels Ooh. like. But, <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like, <laughs> it <laughs> should, like, it's just, like, oh, man, like, it's just, at and is just, like, well, I think we're going to, like, it's, like, betting on, it's betting on every horse in the race now. I mean, yeah. I've heard that, I've heard that, you know, Palm's getting their web OS on at and They're going to have some version of the pre on at and later this year. And, I think at and is finally like, you know what, I think it's time to kind of hedge our bets and, you know, just put it on everybody and see how this rides out. Like, I, I think the, the one trick pony of being the iPhone network has sort of lost its luster for them. But why? Yeah, and a lot of people think that this is because, um, because if at and gets rid of the iPhone or if they don't bid high enough on the contract for the iPhone and it goes to Verizon, they have nothing. that's going to hit at and really hard. because. Yeah. I don't know anybody who likes the AT and T coverage on the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so they, they need something. The they need a second on the iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, I'm sure AT and T looked at that sixty thousand handheld today yeah. and was like, hmm, maybe we should uh, we should get in on that. So, and I, I think you guys are absolutely right. I think that if Apple goes to Verizon, if Apple, you know, if if AT and T loses their contract with the iPhone, their exclusive contract with the iPhone. It's not going to be pretty for AT and T. So I no, think they're kind of I think they're kind of putting their money on on everybody now. Like they're just kind of spreading their bets around and you know, basically saying, well, now we kind of gotta now that Android is really just taken off, we we have to get into this. Otherwise, it would just it would be a foolish business decision not to. So you so you think Android is actually pushing them to do this? 
I think the po the overwhelming popularity of Android and and the uh, the sheer amount of I mean you, we heard this week the sheer amount of handsets that they're you know giving that they're selling every day yeah. is I mean it would just be I think it would be an impractical business decision to not get into the Android business. So does Jobs leave them at the altar then and say oh, okay you're gonna cheat on me I'm gonna cheat on you? I don't they're, know. They're offering it through Verizon and who Apple. Knows what else? Apple's tough because it's like they could say you know what that's fine like we'll just you know we'll keep on trucking and do our thing but then like there's this other like dark side of Apple where it's just like oh yeah well we'll show you you know it's yeah and it's yeah. it's so I don't know what I don't know what side of Apple we'll end up seeing and uh, if if either of you guys Dave or Lana if you have any ideas on that feel free to uh, feel free to let us know what you think is going to happen with Apple. <laughs> well, I don't I don't think that uh, AT and T would have made this jump to you know expanding out so quickly because really what they're coming out with two right away two Android phones yeah. I think that there probably would have been some telegraphing back from Apple saying you know that we are looking at other carriers coming up here because they've had a really close relationship I don't think it's been so adversarial mm -hmm. and it would really benefit AT&T and Apple if they kind of kept the relationship on a positive you know note so for me at least I think that Apple's smart decision would be to say Yes, later on, you know, we'll probably keep you on as a carrier, but we're going to expand out. You should really start expanding out too. Hmm. Yeah, that's it's like uh, we should see other people. Oh, yes, that's, <laughs> that's so sad. We need to open <laughs> the know, like, breaking it, up. I know it's like yeah. it's good. It's you know, kind what? of the nice blow off. It wasn't a know? marriage; it was working anyway. Yeah, I it's, rich, it's, two yeah. Rich. yeah, yeah. It's, about, it's about time. <laughs> yeah, definitely right. about that time. All right, so um, here's an interesting art article. It sort of highlights some things we were talking about earlier. Um, <laughs> too much Android. <laughs> Google, so there have been a couple articles this week. I chose one. Basically, the author was saying that um, Google has an interesting problem in that their innovation is too fast. And by that, he basically was saying, all right, so we saw not one, but two new Android devices announced just by HTC alone. So HTC basically is, is, yeah. is, is, is you know, out, out doing themselves. Yeah, within With, sixteen was it sixteen weeks of the Droid launching, and well, I mean, I, I, right? And then, I don't understand. <laughs> and so now, I mean, basically, the desire is basically a better version of the Nexus One, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, and the Legend is is a is a huge upgrade on the Hero, <laughs> and people are pissed. It's getting plain silly now. And, yeah, and to the point where you know, and Google's upstaging their own partners. So basically, you have companies upstaging themselves. Right. You have Google upstaging the companies that are, they're partnering with. Yeah. And it's just, everyone just is going too fast. And now the consumers are starting to get whiplash. Right. And they're starting to, they're starting to get pissed. Yeah, right? yeah, we because people are, you know, people buy, a lot of people who buy those really high-end, like the Droid, for example. A lot of yeah. people bought that phone because they wanted to be the first. When you buy a high-end smartphone like that, you want to be one of the first people to have it in your hand. You want to show it off to all your friends. Look, what I, look at the new toy I bought. And um, I really, I love the quote in this article where he, the the, uh, the author says he's wondering if Google is eating its own children. <laughs> right. And like I like it, I can see where someone would feel that way. But I think on that same note, uh, you know, if you look at something like um, the Japanese market, as we were talking about earlier, um, people tend to buy cell phones not necessarily as um, items they keep for a long period of time. They keep them as as they have them as fashion statements, and there's you know all different colors, and they may not have as many features or they may not have because a lot of the Japanese market runs by text like it's everything's text based right. and um, and you know they've had a lot of trouble launching the iPhone in Japan like it's starting to finally kind of people are starting to come around to it but it, it took a while because yeah. people you know were just like well why you know why would I upgrade to this when I have you know nine other devices that do the same thing and so here we don't really have that sort of overabundance of technology available in our hands and so I but I think now it's starting to get to a point where they're gonna start releasing phones fast furious mm -hmm. they want you to spend money on them I mean because really with all of the price wars going on on you know on on plans and things like that I mean like Sprint's got what is it like I think it's like unlimited everything minutes text data for 99 bucks a month Right. And they even have the the any mobile to mobile now for less than that. And I mean, you've got all these carriers, you know, basically, and they're and any smartphone now that comes out has to have a price point of one ninety nine or less after after two year contract. So I think um, I think now it's going to be not no longer getting people to just buy one phone for four hundred dollars for like two or three years. They want people to now be buying phones every six months. Right. Yeah. And I wonder how much that's cultural with. I don't know about the HTC side, but Google, you know, being starting off as a software company, they they can release their software. 
daily and update it. And I'm wondering how much that translates to the hardware side. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you know. Well, let's just keep. Well, updating well they have it. so much. I mean, it's such a behemoth. I mean, they, they can just mobilize like right. that and get things done so that's quickly. That's true. Too. So really it also speaks to their. It right. also speaks to their open source uh, roots there, because open source. I mean, a lot of open source programs have nightly builds of their software, mm -hmm. and they're kind of reiterating every time with the phone. So you think they're trying to turn us into uh, a culture like the Japanese, where we're buying phones like clothes? I think so. I well, think I think, I think it's more. I think it's going to be more of um, you know buying the latest and greatest. I think cell phones have finally migrated into this um, this level of being a fashion statement, mm -hmm. being you know the hot new toy, being you know the, your gaming device. Like to some extent, I mean, you're not going to be playing you know PlayStation three games on there or anything like that anytime soon. But you know, it's it's your newspaper now. It's it's everything. And so I think now people are and um, when <clears throat> when Kevin was talking about you know the the niche markets of all these phones like the Fender phone like that's a statement like you're making a statement about who you are by the phone that you're having so yeah. if you're a droid like if you have a droid then you're this kind of person or if you have a pre you're this kind of person you're <laughs> yeah. an iPhone you're this kind of person and I, th I definitely think that more and more we're gonna start seeing an, an uh, almost an overabundance of phones coming out but hey that's better for us as consumers because then we can be more choosy as to like what so we, options we so have we should register choose your android phone.com get some tutorials going no, get, a little, get a little get a little quiz a facebook quiz i'm going to i'm going to make a facebook quizzes. what android so phone are you you were telling me earlier also that uh, one of the reasons why people buy phones in japan is because uh, they want to put little dolls on them or uh, this what, is what, such a it's that? such a strange Chuck thing Chuck a friend of mine is um is a friend of mine is, from, is uh, Japanese, um, and he was saying that like um, one of the things that a lot of Japanese people like is having the um, the cell phone charm like loop yeah. on there, and uh, which is like a lucky like a lucky rabbit's foot kind yeah, of thing. It's like, like the, off those the little phone. yeah, you get them. I mean, and and he g brought me some from Japan that were Nightmare Before Christmas, and um, and he was just like, yeah, like the iPhone doesn't have that, and so a you lot can't, of people you can't hook it on anywhere. Yeah, and it's like if it. you ever know people who have like giant keychains like filled with stuff, like yeah. this is the same. You see this like uh, a little bit in Japan where they have you know like tons of little stuffed animals and like tchotchkes and everything like and so attached you, to their zippers. When you answer your phone, you get like a bunny like bouncing on your head, or well, like and, and and again, most of it's by text. They don't necessarily. Um, Oh, that's true. So they don't it's, actually—it's mostly right. text-based. So, so it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's okay. And so it's—it's it's more of a—it's more of a, it's a personal statement. Like your cell phone is a personal statement, as opposed well, to just a thing you use to talk on. David Lane. Well, and Japan's uh, cell phone culture is really quite a bit different from uh, ours or Europe's cell phone culture, where mm -hmm. as even Europe texts more than we do, Japan, as you said, texts even more than Europe and the United States. But the even bigger point is that they are more a hardware-centric market like before well with the iPhone the iPhone never really has taken off there and as she said it doesn't support you know putting a, a sort of like wrist strap on or something like that mm -hmm. but uh, the bigger point is is it doesn't have these uh, hardware things that people are looking for like video conferencing yeah and apps are a really big deal here in the United States um, but we've never really had that infrastructure that pushed us toward that hardware side yet I mean we're starting to get that Right. Yeah, you look at a lot of the Sony Ericsson phones that are out there, and almost all of them have the little, little space there for those little tchotchkes, those little things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny. I never knew what to do with that though. It's <laughs> this right here. These oh, you have tchotchkes on your phone. I have, oh, I have them that. on my keychain because I my phone doesn't have a it doesn't oh, right. have a tchotchke holder, so I have my little little <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas beads. Cool. So, but yeah, it's just you know, it's like a, it's such a weird small thing, but people, you know. They put a lot it's of all about the cases in the U.S. Yeah, cases for your phone. Yeah, your hip holster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like super hip holsters. If that's that's like an oxymoron, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> they're like the new fanny packs, <laughs> <laughs> which that, that should tell you where they're headed. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or hopefully. So, uh, we were talking about uh, iPhones not having this charm thing. Well. I think the next piece of news is yeah, this will be interesting. So very once, so once again, AT and T slaps Jobs in the head. Oh, yeah. Basically, AT and T <laughs> announces a rival to the Apple App Store. Ugh. Yeah. So it's, not, it's actually not just AT and T. It's uh, twelve of the world's biggest phone networks, including AT and T, um, announce a rival technology tomorrow to Apple's App Store. Um, the combined audience for apps are right now two billion customers. Um, Samsung, LG, Sony Ericsson. 
uh, Orange and Telefonica uh, are all part of the alliance. Um, let's see, what else do we know about this? Well, geez, uh, I, th I think just about every one of those statements should be followed by in theory. Yeah. You know really? I mean? Like the, the amount of customers that they have in theory, because you're going to have to make sure that this stuff interoperates. Mm -hmm. I mean, people want to rip on Android fragmentation. You don't even have the same software. You're talking about building uh, Java virtual engines on top of all these different disparate uh, operating systems that carriers built for their special phones mm -hmm. and have apps run on that, you know, and then agreements between who gets the money off the apps and everything. I mean, Unless that's it's be just a clearinghouse for applications where, like, they have different, like, you log in through your phone and then they just recognize your phone and only give you those kind of apps. Those that I are mean, available? That would yeah. be, I, I, that I seems like it would make the most sense. Yeah. But on, de on the development side, though, I mean, who's going to want to develop for a platform like that? Well, it wouldn't be about developing for that platform. It would just say, yeah, you can put my app in that store, too. But, I mean, it would have to be, I mean, you'd have to develop your application for whatever the API is that they're going to be releasing it on. Right. So, I mean, either they would have to have this same, you know, virtual engine that runs on top of all these different phones, or they have to find some way to magically, you know, recompile your code for it. But even mm -hmm. Android doesn't do that. You have to, you know, put in the different stuff for screen sizes. Mm -hmm. I just think it's going to be a, a whole other layer of headache. That's a good point. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. I think it's much needed because, I mean, the App Store is ridiculous. Even yesterday or today, was it, they started banning applications because of adult-themed content. Yeah. Which is... Like, uh, what yeah. in the app store? Yeah. Well, that's that's always been true, though. That's not just a recent development. No, but, but they, now it's but it's not. It term. used before yeah. used to be like pornographic, but now it's yeah. like just the, the whisper of adult content. They're like, whoa, no, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. yeah. But they actually changed their uh, agreements, and they've been uh, removing developers from the store. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. I mean, does yeah. it, when did this happen? Uh, uh, today. Oh, yeah, okay. I, that's well, I was gonna say last like two days or so. <laughs> Got it. No wonder yeah. I missed it. Yeah. Breaking news. <laughs> but I think in terms of apps, like the next story, I think uh, this for me like has a lot more potential in terms of succeeding. Yeah. Okay. And hugely. So addressing uh, that's why I put this one next. Yeah. It addresses the problem of the previous one, um, theoretically. Um, so the bane of all mobile app developers is, of course, rewriting the same app over and over again mm -hmm. for multiple platforms. For everything. So uh. you, yeah. Right, so you write for your <laughs> iPhone. You write you know a different one for Android, a different one for BlackBerry, different for Palm Pre. Nokia, Windows Mobile. Mm -hmm. But someone Good has God, a someone kill me. <laughs> so, Somebody. but yes, Who it's someone. That? There's yeah. a white knight Some on the horizon. Enterprising company. There is one hope, and that hope is Adobe. Yeah, and Flash oh. and Air. Yes. Well, there, there may be more than just one. But Adobe Air. <laughs> no, you guys aren't liking this one. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. He's not. not well, he's that. he's got a Mac here that chugs on you know Flash. Yeah. It's like something horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so he hates Adobe like anything. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. But I mean, would you agree that they're probably the closest to having a, a write once, run anywhere platform? Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Other okay. than HTML5. Okay. And, yeah. and, and I mean, you know, Flash might address a lot of the issues with screen size. You know, because it's if you build your apps the right way, they just kind of auto scale and fit. Right. They have right. a lot of the authoring problems solved for multiple formats and handsets, so that's nice. Yeah. I think it'll be really interesting to see uh, the development of this as we all start getting Flash in browser. Yeah, or Air, actually. So, so and it, well, yeah. And, it, Air. So right. and, then, and then you have your Air uh, app store. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, and then, <laughs> right, and then right. you've got like, the separate app store, yeah. and you've got, but then you have to develop uh, different apps for each platform, again, like to say, hey, this is our store for mm -hmm. all these yeah, different geez, if, if they wanted to surround around one sort of uh, you know, standard, maybe these uh, mobile operators that we were talking about in the last story should have been looking at Air, you know, because yeah. and let Adobe worry about making it work on the platform, and then, right. yeah. you know, developers can just code for that. Right, and Adobe exactly. has always been really good about bringing things in and out, because a lot of production houses, they build at least their original designs for the iPhone in some kind of Photoshop or Illustrator, and then they bring it into whatever to code it up for the iPhone or any other kind of a mobile thing. So if you could just do that right in and keep it through the Adobe workflow to the end, then that would be great for people. It's just a, uh, you got to keep the Adobe Air light and not yeah. CPU intensive. Uh, just in reaction to something like this, job, Steve Jobs said that if they were to support Adobe Air on the iPad, it would have an hour and a half of battery life instead of 10 hours. Do you believe that? Because it's that's because made by <laughs> yeah. Apple. Yeah. I know. Do you, do you believe that or not? Yeah. I don't know about that. 
You know, well, supposedly I would, is my yeah. word of the day. I think now. <laughs> yeah, I, I would believe I that it would cut monitor, it in half, but not. Yeah, I always monitor my uh, system resources when I'm running any kind of programs, because especially for streaming video and stuff like this. And whenever some kind of Adobe thing loads up, it just hits it. And yeah, it's crazy. Well, we, I guess we have to think like the Cortex processors that are coming out, the Snapdragon processor. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one too that's supposed to be like a sub. Uh, $100 making phone processor. It's mm -hmm. so cheap. Uh, these have all, like, whenever I read about them, they say that they've been working with Adobe. Yeah. That's you know, really, to make the extensions and the processor. Yeah, to, that's a big deal. That's going to help a lot. That's and a Apple doesn't deal. have that. It's in good their that they have phone. access. I can bet that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. really good they have access to that. It is yeah. feeling to me like Flash and Air are going to be very. I think that's going to be huge. I, I definitely think that's going to be huge. Because yeah. the thing is, is you know, there are a lot of apps on. I have an iTouch, and yeah. there are a lot of apps on there that I would love. Like, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but I love Pocket God, and I would love I, to have I, every update. I love just Pocket. To see I know what they have. they're so yeah. good, and I, I just you know I'm like, why don't I have that on my phone? Like, please come port, <laughs> like port it, yeah. and it's you know it's you know like the original Mass Effect only on Xbox, and I didn't get to have it on PlayStation. Very sad. Yeah, I mean, we finally we're in the the era where we can build the back end once we don't mm -hmm. have to build it multiple times, and, and ho I mean maybe it's a decade away, but. <laughs> It's going to uh, be a while before the front end is uh, yeah. right once, run anywhere. Yeah, I'll definitely. Okay. All right, next story. Uh, Microsoft unveils Windows 7 phone operating system. So basically the latest version of Windows, the phone 7 series, uh, was unveiled at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Um, also, Microsoft brings together Xbox, Xbox Live games and the Zune music and video experience to the mobile phone. It's a Zune phone. Yeah, it's a Zune phone, basically. So, question, does this mean anything? Does this put Microsoft back on the map? You know, uh -huh. um, for me, I think that the Xbox Live thing yeah. is going to go over huge with people. Mm -hmm. it's, that is going to be, I mean, the Zune aside, I mean, nobody... Yeah. I, I don't know how, I, I won't even get into that, but I, I definitely think the Xbox Live, the integration with Xbox Live, if it's good... People are gonna flip. Now, why? Now mm -hmm. you're a big gamer, right? So, I am. And are you, are you big? You have an Xbox. I wish I did. Okay, so <laughs> you don't. That's the only one I don't have. <laughs> but if you did, so why do you think? Why is this a big deal for gamers? You know, because the the social aspect of gaming is now like, for example, uh, Call of Duty Two, Modern yeah, Warfare. Okay, that's the big one right now. So, uh, or <laughs> Mass Effect is is also huge right now. I, there's I don't, um, but uh, let's go with Call of Duty because it's all there's so many multiplayer yeah. um, aspects of that game. So let's say you're on Xbox Live, you are on your phone, and someone's like, hey, you know, they, they can, people can contact you without having to know your cell phone number. They yeah. just have to know your gamer tag. Like, you don't have to give out any personal oh. information. It connects your phone to the Xbox. To the Xbox Live uh, network. And, and on the social grid, basically. Yeah. I see. It, Which is basically amazing. my avatar, yeah. my avatar, my in-world identity yeah. is now tied to my, to your my handset. So on a superficial level, you'd have like oh, my gamer cards or, or right. leaderboards or achievements. So right. the L from the tavern can now call me? And then, yeah, like a deeper integration <laughs> yes. would be like my guild's online. We have a yep. little Got online guild's set online, up the raid. raid's coming. Okay, yeah. Right, exactly. I was trying to figure out why this was a big deal. It didn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, and that's a huge thing. I mean, if people are saying, hey, like there's going to be a, we're going to have a big, you know, modern warfare night yeah. or whatever might, tonight at five or, you know, however you want to do it. that. I mean, I think. Poor, I mean, the gamer tag thing. I really think people are going to love that if they if they do it well. And based on what I've seen for for Windows Seven, um, for Windows Phone Seven, I think it's I think it's going to go very yeah. well. Yeah, and the trick is going to be to you know tie everything together, right? Like if I'm if I'm talking about the web, my blog when I blog goes to my Twitter, which goes to my Buzz, and it's it, right. nothing's repeated, nothing's duplicated. It's just a nice little thing. It's yeah. So it's as a long nice as it's flow. you know as long as that that yeah. that experience is tightly integrated. Yeah. And I have it to say, should be nice. from what I've seen so far, I mean, just the brief stuff that I've seen on Windows Phone 7, it, well, it's not bad. I was I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting to be like, oh, that's disappointing. But I, I was, it, just like Windows 7, I was pleasantly surprised. Hmm. And I think it's really great that they took the, I mean, a lot of people like to diss the Zune, but with the Zune HD and that new user interface, it is amazing. It's great. Right. And, the, and the if they can speech. just, yeah. I was just, just going to say the coolest feature is when you're playing Xbox, you can pick up the phone and order a pizza. That is like, <laughs> sorry. Sometimes my humor is a little dry. <laughs> but then again, like with, with that uh, Zune stuff, it's kind of similar to what the Xbox Live integration will be. With Zune, they have Zune Pass. And like, 
like they were mentioning on this week in uh, startups earlier, um, you you can stream music or you can have a music subscription. It's fourteen ninety nine a month, but that's great for music people. And if you can, you have this on a phone and just download any song you ever wanted on mm-hmm. your phone with the integration of your social network attached to that. That is a big deal. Yeah, or awesome. if your Xbox is on at home, you could connect maybe through your. Uh your, your, your mobile device to your library of videos oh, wow. yeah. or music. Yeah. It, it could really get crazy. I'm very curious to see how they, um, I'm very curious to see how they integrate the, the Windows Phone 7 Xbox Live with your, you know, using it as a remote, for example, for your media center. Yeah. They're very good at um, getting all the media center stuff together. And I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how that yeah. works. And, and I, I do think that that's going to be a big thing. If you can access your media center from yeah but by the way my app pick of the week is the uh the fios guy fios at home i'm not trying to brag <laughs> but uh it's the uh you know the android app for fios just control your uh, cable box yeah. very cool which yeah. is yeah. fantastic so but I, I definitely think that if they can integrate xbox live the right way which yeah. which that's they did xbox live very well so I, I have confidence in that so i but i think it's i think that's going to be or if i could then get my thing. netflix off of my xbox to my right phone. if you can oh, stream that, your that, netflix because they be have crazy. the instant that streaming Right, they have the instant streaming yeah. f- for for Xbox Live and everything. So if you can, I mean, if you're able to instant stream that's Netflix to your phone, point. I mean, that's huge, huge, yeah. huge. Okay, you put so the webcam on the Xbox well, I, uh, and watch your dogs. I, yeah, exactly. So I guess, like, I, guess I guess we're thinking that Microsoft did a good move here, and this is yeah. A, yeah. Well, yeah. I think that one of the one of the big things too. You guys are kind of hinting all around it is the media integration. I mean, there's no other smartphone out there that has a media integration stack like what the iPhone does. Yeah. Right. You know, and if a media, Microsoft true media can really center. Exactly. If Microsoft can duplicate that, mm-hmm. you know, with, but with an Xbox instead of using a Mac or PC, then I think that they're really onto something. I mean, Android doesn't have that sort of a, a media stack, you know, where you can easily put podcasts, you know, video podcasts sync it from another main device or books. You know, that isn't going to eat yeah. battery downloading. Yeah. yeah, books. So, I mean, I think that if they push into that, and you're talking about the Xbox Live integration, you know, if they really focus on the media portion of that, they could really have a hit here. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Good job, Microsoft. Okay. So next story. Uh, you know, books are near and dear to my heart. They are. Especially the whole ebook thing and Kindles yeah. and all that. Okay. So next story: ebook app for Android announced. So finally, we got. We have finally we're going to have a, awesome. an, a, a decent ebook reader. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Packet Video. Announced that it's working with Milmo to launch a new ebook application for Android handsets. Uh, it's slated to arrive in Japan spring of this year. Um, yeah, you will use SDC DRM, so basically to enable users to purchase, manage, and browse ebooks on their Android handsets. So the, the store, unfortunately, it's only in Japan, for what I can tell here. But unfortunately, or fortunately, there is now a way, there basically is a book store right. and a book reader. Much akin to the Kindle, you know, sort of yeah. setup, uh, or even what you're seeing in the iTunes I, apps. Any idea on how it compares to? Because uh, when the iPad came out, the price point was yeah. such that it kind of people right. are saying it's going to kill the Kindle. Is there any? Don't know, but I'm I don't sure know if it's that because it's not right. like, you know it's not that big, right? Physically. I was so. going to say like all seven people in Japan who have an Android. Right. Device, <laughs> like that's <laughs> right. Um, well, well, I mean, I think this is big news, not really for the handsets. Or, but for just right. Android in general. But for the tablets. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the Android yeah, yeah. tablets. That's oh, great. Right. Yeah, because yes, my, contention is, yeah. my contention is that the tablets, the, the, the purpose of tablets in life is to be an e-book reader. Yeah. And that's really where their killer mm-hmm. app is. Save the print industry. But it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think, and, and Apple's figured that out with the iPad. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have the iBook. You know, they're basically saying, hey, it's a Kindle. It's just a better Kindle. Yeah. And it's Android, the market. Android tablets look cool. But they don't really have that media stack like they, like uh, oh, David right. Lane was saying. Yeah. Um, specifically for books, which I believe is a killer app for the for the tablets. So yeah. mm-hmm. I think for the Android tablets to really take off, they need something like that. So yeah. Oh, and I, I just, hopefully, I mean, it'll the the book. It'll be interesting to see how many and how quickly they can populate the book player library. Yeah. So I think that's. Gonna I don't be think they're gonna have a problem with that. I mean, anytime a new platform comes out, people you know, just jump all over. People it. jump all over it, and even if the publishers don't. There's a lot of small publishers and indie publishers yeah. that you know mm-hmm. have no problem whatsoever. And yeah, the if Kindle, they're open enough, yeah. if they're not locking down there, who can sign on? Well, Android's sign open. On. So, yeah. Well, I'm it's talking about the bookstore itself. Yeah. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, no, I, I think that's a great idea. Dave Lane, do you guys think, uh, what do you guys think about this? Do you think this is going to be a big thing in terms of uh, 
the, the tablet support for, you know, books, e-books and, and readers? Yeah, it's definitely needed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that that's, that's where it's pushing into. You know, we talked about the specialization of Android on, on last week, you know, with remotes and microwaves and stuff. And uh, Texas Instruments is coming out with uh, dual display support now for Android where you could have a dual display phone, right. almost like a clamshell, you know, reader. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's definitely where we're headed with it. Okay. Last story. We're running over a little bit here. Uh, mm -hmm. So today, uh, Dutch mobile company Layar, L-A-Y-A-R, mm -hmm. uh, basically announced that they're going to allow developers of Layars to monetize their creation on the platform. So basically, there's going to be a, a Layar store where you can go and, and you know... And Layars sell. are... Oh, yes, I have... For the unenlightened. Content. Yeah, so Layars are... Um, augmented reality. Augmented I, was, reality. I was completely... Uh, Uninformed when I came in today, so I was I was trained on the yeah, yeah. layer system. It's so, freaking awesome. So with your handset, basically you're aware that there's a camera here, right? So if I turn on the camera, which I'm not right now, but if I did have it on and I push it around there, I can see, you know, basically what, what's going through the camera. What what layer does is it puts a layer of information or graphics on top of the video and integrates it into the video. Um, so it's sort of like, you know, when you see Terminator and he's like analyzing the mm -hmm. landscape and there's heads like information. Display. Yeah, it's like a heads up display. So you can do various things like um, one, one of the neater apps is you can find out where in and out burgers are. So if there's one over there, I'll see yeah. that it's, it's almost like a tricorder for in and out burgers. And you'll see like a, a burger floating in the air. Um, I've actually, <laughs> I'll show you like how far it, away it it's is. It's not and Android, but uh, TED10 has a very awesome uh, Bing demo using Bing Maps and just the way they zoom in from the high level to the low level and transition into video shots and then augmented uh, you can actually go into buildings now oh, wow. uh, with like portable kind of you know the, the the rig they scan the streets with it's for people uh, so that if anyone's just wanting to see more go to go to Bing and just zoom in and out of things and it's it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. yeah so so basically what layers done now is, is they said or lay are yeah. they said you can you, know, you can now sell your your layer based applications inside of the application itself so this is going to open up a, yeah. you know, there's a store within a store now. Thing. I've e even seen some demos where you were, you know, you're filming the camera where you can actually uh, take, take that and map it into the, you know, your GPS coordinates. So if I zoom in, you know, I'm outside on the street yeah. off Google Maps, come in off Street View, come into the office, I could see where you're sitting and the video that you're looking at. It's, oh, wow. That's, what, that's the Bing demo. It's crazy. That's that is pretty crazy. Wild. Yeah, and so the these are the Ted devices the that will enable them. TED 10, it's recent. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll send it. I'll send and it what's interesting about Layar, though, is it's all built on XML code. So yeah. anyone can easily make one of these Layar uh, layers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, have you seen that building that they made? They're uh, remodeling a uh, art museum. In Europe, mm -hmm. what 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 would I I can't remember the country you said that it uh, it's made in it's in Holland I think right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was, yeah, it was uh, well they're Dutch, Lair is Dutch so okay, and uh, you could yeah and it, you stand there on the street and you hold up your phone and you can see what the building is going to look like that you know you so see cool. the construction site with your eyes but right through the camera oh my god that's wild yeah mm -hmm. Dave's uh Dave's got his uh he's got an iPhone but he's got yep, it that's Lair right there. Oh, cool. And is that the, which one is that? What are, you, what are you showing us right now? Is that the Twitter one? or? Um, yeah, this is the Twitter one. There's not very many tweets around. but You guys are in Jackson, Michigan. There's nobody. <laughs> I guess your Twitter oh, people friends use aren't. Twitter here. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't saying that. I was just saying your Twitter friends aren't necessarily there. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, so what you're, what you're showing, I've actually played around with this myself. It's really cool. One of the cooler yeah. layer apps is that, you know, it, you, you basically can fuse your Twitter um, login with layer. So, basically, anyone, you can see tweets. Right. That are in your they're in your follow list, that and you can see so like cool. if somebody in that direction just tweets in the last couple of minutes, right. you'll see it appear on your layer, and it'll show who it is and what the tweet is. I love mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, it's pretty wild. Although I have to say, there's, I do have some concern about like like there's always that fine line between like something that's really cool and something that totally infringes on your privacy as a human being. Like, yeah. like I'm just like I don't know if I want people to be able to find me on this layer that like layer, and I. You know, like that would make me really nervous to some extent. But you Gen forget to turn it off. Right, like you forget that, and like you maybe you have a stalker, or like you know, it's just just it's kind of scary in a way. But I mean, I it's amazing the technology that's coming out of. I mean, just to be able to, I mean, 
the, the in and out thing was my favorite. You know, like, you're <laughs> like, you're like this, and you're just like, hey, there's a floating hamburger. <laughs> there's an in and out in that direction. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I love that. So it's a little bit like Google goggles. It is a little someone bit. Someone was like saying that. Yeah, someone asked yeah. does Lair use goggles? Yeah, it is. Um, it'll be you very interesting to see if Google Goggles uh, has an app for translation at some point, like like Dave and Lane were mentioning. Yeah. Oh, especially if you're a tourist. What do you mean, Layar? Wouldn't that be awesome? Layar, yeah. yeah. Well, if, if, yeah, if yeah. They, they develop goggles for something for Layar, if you're a tourist, you go. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Like a tourist app where you go to, you know, Prague and you look around. I'm obsessed with Prague today. I don't know yeah. what's wrong with me. <laughs> and a lot of programs have that augmented reality thing, like Yelp, at least on the iPhone. They have it, and there's a couple like location-based programs that have it. And now that all these phones are starting to come out with uh, the little... Uh, digital compass inside them, it allows them to use that. And it is definitely, I don't know how useful it's, I mean, it's cool, <laughs> it's really yeah. cool, uh, but a map is also useful too. Yeah, that's sort of my feeling about the whole layer thing, is that the, or the whole augmented reality thing, is mm -hmm. that it seems like, it seems gimmicky to me. Yeah, like it's so cool. one thing, like, like your, the other guy was saying there, it's really cool if you're looking at buildings and adding some kind of stuff to it. Like uh, I set up one that around here that is like an art tour around town. So there's different public pieces of art and you can go and open up layer and look for all those and it gives you information about the artist and all that kind of my, stuff. My uh, kind of, if I had a ton of money and didn't, and what, all the time in the world, my kind of uh, fantasy application is where you could kind of sit on a city corner and slide a like time and look at the the, the city sl change over two or three hundred years, right? Mm -hmm. Take all the archival oh, footage, cool. that's take cool. current footage, and just really get a feeling time for how lapse, how places but over evolve. A very long period of time. Yeah, that's so very I, cool. I you know if you guys hear of anything like that, I'm just that would be really. Well, they, cool. uh, they came out with some stuff for Google Earth, I think. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That that they they don't have a lot of data in there. Right. But there are certain locations where you can do that. You can slide back and forth and see how areas have changed over time. But the augmented reality portion, I think, you know, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, that would be pretty interesting, too. I think they'd have to hire a lot more uh, cars to drive around, though. <laughs> yeah. I'd be, I'd be the jerk who, like, developed a layer thing that was, like, pop-up video, like that TV show pop-up video. <laughs> so, you, like, yes. put up a movie, and there's you just, like, hold your phone up because really? you all these ridiculous, like, little, like... You know, like I would do a layer thing where it's like you walk around town and you like hold. There's like weird little bits of like random right. trivia about different places. Right, and stuff. but then I'm waiting for like a <laughs> protest. Makes that you know, sound a store too, has the protesters and they have all these little. <laughs> they yeah, get yeah, exactly, with, exactly. With augmented pop-ups. Exactly. So, okay. <laughs> well, I guess that's it for this week. I think I think that's it. Uh, Dave and Lane, uh, thank you again for coming back on again this week. You guys are fantastic mm -hmm. as always. Uh, you you guys can catch a Dave and Lane on the Android <laughs> App Show Sunday at three. Is it three o'clock? Three o'clock is when we start, and we start with uh, the iPhone, the iPad show. Then we do the App Show. Then we do the Android App Show and the Android Tech Show. So. And those are Eastern time. Eastern yeah. time. So yeah. noon noon, noon on the West Coast, Eastern time, mm -hmm. uh, three o'clock. Yep. And uh, and you can you can catch them on Twitter and uh, the two you guys have two different Twitter, uh, two different Twitter call signs I'll call them. Yep, it's my handle. <laughs> uh, uh, now for our personal accounts, mine's one four n three. Yep, and I'm Audio Collective, and those are just our personal ones. But then we have ones for the show too. Yeah, Android App Show and Android Tech Show. Mm hmm. Android App Show and Android Tech Show. Uh, you can catch us at TWI Android on Twitter. Yep. You can find us online at uh, TWIAndroid.com. And you can find Mark on Twitter. Yes, at Mark Jeffrey. Mark Jeffrey, but R E Y. Yes, M A R K J E F F R E Y. And you can find me as Heartless Jez, J E Z. Are you on Twitter? Yeah, Freelance CTO. Freelance yep. CTO. FreelanceCTO.com is my. On again, off again blog. Very nice. And uh, and thank you, John. John oh, thanks. Scheifel. I had a fantastic time. This yeah. was really cool. Yeah, thanks and, for oh, coming on. And thanks yeah. to Kevin Marks, too. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, thanks to Kevin Marks for, for showering us with his genius today. Because yeah, that, that was, was really cool. that was really enlightening. Yeah, he's a great was, guest. He's yeah, awesome. really great guest. Um, I, I hope to have him on again at, at some point soon. So we will. He's fantastic. Absolutely. So, But thank you very much, uh, everyone out there, for watching. This has been This Week in Android. I'm Ashley Esqueda. This has been Mark Jeffrey. And uh, see you next week.